Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we're going to explore N8N, a powerful open source workflow automation tool that lets you connect apps, databases, APIs and AI together with no code or low code logic. So what is N8N? Think of it like an automation engine where you drag and drop different building blocks called nodes. Each node can trigger, transform, or send data to another system. And the best part? You're in control. N8N runs locally, in Docker, or in the cloud. And you can customize it however you like. We will run N8N locally on Docker, so make sure you have Docker Desktop installed. It's straightforward. But in case you need a guide, you can watch the following video. I covered the steps to install Docker Desktop here. We create a new folder called N8N. In this folder, we create three folders. Two to house the N8N data and third one in case we want to share data or files between the host and the container. We mount these folders under the volume section in the Docker Compose file. We define the Postgres credentials and other environment variables values in the env file. Be sure to update the values before creating the containers. All the files are available in the GitHub repo. The link is in the description below. This is the Docker Compose file. In this file, we define the containers. We are using the latest N8N image. We define a few environment variables, as well as leverage the ones defined in the env file. These are used for the Postgres and N8N configuration. We define two services Postgres and N8N. We have set DB type equal Postgres. This means all N8N data, including execution logs, workflow runs, credentials, settings will be saved into the Postgres database. The N8N runs on port 5678. We mount the three folders to this container. This allows data persistence and data sharing between the host and container. Finally, this service depends on the Postgres being healthy. Now we open a command prompt window. We issue the following command, docker compose up dash D. This will pull the Postgres and N8N images from Docker Hub. Once the images are downloaded, then the Docker containers will spin up. We can let this process complete. Upon completion, we can bring up Docker Desktop and view the containers. We can check the container status, and if they are running, then we launch N8N on port 5678. On first launch, it will ask us to create an account. We provide email, make sure to provide a valid email address, username, and password to sign up. Once we are logged in, we can request a free activation key. We click on the user icon on the bottom left corner and select settings. Here we request a key and it will be emailed to the address we provided during sign up. We can enter the key here to activate it. This is the N8N user interface. We begin with a workflow. So let's create a new workflow. We need to add nodes or a step. The first step is a trigger that triggers the whole workflow we will select the on chat message. Let's make this chat publicly available. We can customize a few things here. Let's update the initial message. Also, let's add a title to this chat. You can label it to your requirements. In addition, we can add a subtitle. This will provide some context to the users once they are accessing this chat from the public URL. We can click outside the dialog box or on the back button to get back to the canvas. Our first step is configured and this will trigger our workflow. Let's add the next node. We will search for an AI agent and select it. Let's add the option of the system message. This is connected to the chat trigger. Chat input is used as the user message. Now we will add the system message. I have prepared one with the help of LLM. It begins with setting context for the AI agent. We provide the schema for the database. We provide some guidelines for the SQL generation and the response. This is also available in the repo, so don't worry about copying it. I will copy this message in its entirety and paste it in the system message. 
we have set the user and system message for this agent. Next, we configure the chat model. We have a number of options for this. If you are using any of these services, then you can pick and choose. I will pick Google Gemini. We need to create new credentials for it. We need an API key for the chat model. We can get one from Google AI Studio. You need a Gmail account and you can get a free API key. We can create a new API key, select or create a project. Click the API key and copy it. I am using the free tier account. We paste the API key and save the credentials for Gemini. We can select a chat model from the drop down list. I will stick with the default one. Our chat model is configured. Let's add memory for this agent. We can select the simple memory that should work fine. But I will configure Postgres for memory. This way we can access the chat history. We will need to create credentials for Postgres. For this, we need the server details. For the host, I will provide the IP address of the server and put in the user and password of the database. Leave the remaining options as default and click Save. This will test the connection details. We can adjust the chat context window to our liking. The chat memory is configured for this agent. Next, we can add tools. I will add a Think tool. It allows the agent to reflect on the question by talking to itself before providing an answer. In particular, this is useful for complex queries that require a thoughtful response. Let's add the query tool. We search for the Postgres and select the Postgres tool. We create new credentials for Postgres. As our data resides in a different database, we create a view in the Postgres Adventure Works database. This hides the joins complexity and provides a single table for the chat model. This is based on the schema we developed using dbt. You can either recreate it using the dbt series, or I will provide the data as a CSV file that you import in a database. We provide the server details, database, and credentials. Tool description is set automatically. We select the operation to execute the query. We will grab the query generated by AI. It's in a variable and we access it via a JavaScript variable. The query tool is configured and with this AI agent's configuration is complete. Now we can begin analyzing our data using the agent. We simply ask a question and the workflow runs to generate an answer. For example, it can calculate and return the total sales amount. We can then ask a follow-up question, such as showing sales by country, and the agent efficiently aggregates the data at the country level. Let's copy the public chat URL from the chat message and open it to access the public interface. We save our workflow and activate it before we can launch the public chat. Here, we can interact directly with the agent and perform our data analysis. For example, Let's ask the agent to show the top 10 products. We simply type the question and wait for the response. The agent returns the top 10 products along with useful insights based on the data. Now, let's see if we can explore those insights further by copying and pasting one of them back as a follow-up question. This is a solid analysis. It not only highlights sales performance, but also offers practical insights for inventory management, along with a few recommendations for marketing and sales strategies. There's even a follow-up to explore the sales trend over time. By looking at sales by year, it tells a clear story of how performance has evolved, making this a very useful and insightful tool. We also have access to the execution log so we can know what each step of the workflow is doing based on the given question. This is really helpful for understanding and troubleshooting each node. We have user questions saved in Postgres so we can see what the users are really interested in. This can help further improve this tool. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.